Hey guys, welcome back once again. This is the continuation of my previous video. In previous video, we have discussed the question number one to five from the uh, sample MSAT test paper. And today I'm going to solve a question number six to 10. So if you have not watched that video, find the link below in the uh, description box and you can watch it, right? So today we're going to do question number six to 10 as per the MSAT test specification. So let's start. Okay, question number six here is basically a geometry question. It says in the diagram below, right triangle ABC has legs whose lengths are four and six. What is the volume of the three dimensional object formed by continuously rotating the right triangle about AB? So look at here, they are talking you about the volume of a three dimensional object formed by continuously rotating about the line. AB. So this is the line AB. Now look at here. If you are rotating something by considering AB as the reference point, something like this, if you rotate something like that, so whatever the uh, solid which is going to generate, that's going to be a cone. All right. So now look at here. What I do, if I take this term, we are rotating in this way. We are rotating in this way, something like this. So if I take this term some over here and after some point, so this corner will be appearing over here. And after some point, again, it goes back to its original. So whatever the 3D geometry figure which has been generated, so the 3D geometry, it's going to be the cone. So indirectly, they're asking you, what is the volume of a cone? So let me tell you, what is the volume of a cone? Volume of a cone, it's basically one third the volume of a cylinder. So what is volume of a cylinder? Pi r square h. So volume of a cone, it's going to be one third of pi r square h. Now, what is the radius and what is the height the, with, with the cone which has generated? This, it's going to be the radius and this is going to be the height. Then I can say the value of R, it's going to be 4 because this is the radius and 6 is going to be height and the value of H is going to be 6. Now, substitute over here to find the volume. So, volume, it's going to be one third of pi times 4 square times 6. So, just simplify it. 3 times 1, 3, 3 times 2, 6. So 4 square is 16, 16 times 2, it's going to be 32. 32 times pi, it's going to be 32 pi. So right answer to this question is A. So anyway, if you don't know like how I'm simplifying and all, anyway, exam is a calculator. As all options are available in terms of pi, no need to canceling the term pi. So just simplify the numbers and keep pi as it is, right? Okay, so let's move to the next question. Next question says, what's talking about? Okay, so next question is something about a, a concept called rotation, reflection, something. All right, so question says, how are these figures related? So how these figures are related? So if you can observe carefully, so what actually happening to this figure which has been given? So look at, so options here given here are reflection, rotation, translation, not related, dilation. So rotation is something like, you know, the figure has to rotate with a certain angle. And a translation, it's basically the moving of the figure upside down or left, right, according to, without changing its angle. So I can just, you know, if, if this is the position, I can go right, left, up, down without changing the position of an angle. That's what we say the translation. And when we say uh, dilation, dilation is basically the scaling. So increasing the coordinate point, increasing the length of the line or decreasing the length of the line, the figure which has been given, that's called the dilation. Now our party here is what this is representing. So now look at carefully over here. The same point here, similar image is forming here with the same here. And this lines image is forming over here. And this lines image is forming over here. This lines image is forming over here. So this is basically a reflection. So what, whatever the image we see in a mirror, that's a reflection. But this image is reflecting with the certain uh, axis. So this image is reflecting at the axis called x is equals to negative two. Now look at here from this point, the length from here to here, and the length from here to here is going to be the same. So the corners are also matching. That's why we say 
this is a reflection so a is the right answer here all right next let's go to question number 8 question number 8 is something talking about inverse of the function so oh ram this is based on the inverse function so what actually inverse function let me tell you a simple definition of inverse function any graph reflecting about the line y is equals to x that is called the inverse functions graph so let's take suppose what it, i mean to say example i have a y axis and i have a x axis when i draw a line passes through the origin so when i draw a line passes through the origin this line indicates that the value of this line is going to be y is equals to x it means to say the value of x and y are same when x is one value of y is also one when x is two value of y is also two when x is negative one value of y is also going to be negative one this is the line which is reflects with the line y is equal this is the line which represents line with the y is equals to x now how do i find the inverse let's suppose let's suppose we have a one graph let's suppose we have an uh, graph which is representing in the x y plane over here and which is the graph is something like this so a graph is something like this over here so while when i'm saying reflect about the x uh, this line y is equals to x means this graph will be reflecting about the line y is equals to x the distance from the here to here it would be same and the distance from here to here would be same and this is will be reflecting so this is the if i'm saying this is the my actual function called y and this is called the inverse of y okay so inverse of y this is how the reflection of the curve is or refraction of the graph is while finding the inverse function just remember you have to reflect the image along with the line y is equals to x now question says they haven't given us the graph but they have given us just an expression so that is y is equals to a to the power x so look at here y is equals to a to the power x is an exponential graph and how exponential graph looks exponential graph in general i can represent here as exponential graph looks something like this something like this these are exponentially increasing because the uh, power here is positive means that they're going to be exponentially increasing if if i'm saying y is equals to a to the power negative x in this case the graph of such function is going to be exponentially decrease this curve represent exponentially decrease and this curve is representing exponentially increase now look at here this is the actual curve what we supposed to and i have to find which graph represent the inverse of this and i told you clearly while finding the inverse of the graph i just need to reflect about the line y is equals to x what is your line y is equals to x this is if you reflect this graph about the line y is equals to x then how it gonna be your curve will be something like this your curve will be something like this so which graph is representing of similar type so look at to the options a b c and d so b cannot be the answer because it's representing reflection about the y axis c is representing the curve as it is because it is not representing and the d is again opposite to the same then definitely answer to this question it's gonna be a a is the right answer this is this is we are just predicting we are not drawing the actual graph accurate one so we are just predicting based on the function or based on the expression given here isn't it and they are also mentioned here the value of a should be greater than one it means as the power of uh, value a maybe let's say if you are taking two and if you take the value of x as zero one two three and all and if you plot it the curve is going to be exponentially growth and its approximate inverse function it's going to be the option a all right so let's go to the next question okay so next question is about the geometry what is the length of line segment ac okay so they are asking us what is the length of ac now look at here apart from that they are there are certain values are given certain conditions and values are given condition here says the line segment ac is parallel to line segment de it means this line and this line are parallel another thing they have given the length of ad it's going to be 24 length of ad <coughs> it's going to be 24 and length of db it's going to be 12 and the length of de it's going to be 4 now what concept i use to find the what is the length of ac look if you observe carefully there are like two triangles which has been shown over here so one triangle i can consider is triangle a 
C B and another triangle is D triangle D E B. So in this case, as the line A C and D E are parallel, definitely this angle will be equal to this, and whatever the angle represented here, this angle will be equal to this, and angle B is the common angle for both of the triangle. In this case, I can say triangle A. CB is similar to triangle DEB. When the triangles are similar, they should satisfy the similarity ratio. What is the similarity ratio? The ratio of the largest side of a triangle over the corresponding side of the smaller triangle should be constant. So, in the, according to the similarity constant uh, condition, I can write it here as the ratio of the side of that one AC. AC is the side of the larger triangle over the similar corresponding side is going to be DE is equals to again. Now I can say because I next which next side should I consider? I should consider the next side which sides are known. I know the next side as the length of AB. The length of AB is going to be 24 plus 12. So that's going to be 24 plus 12. That is the entire length of AB. So AB is the side of a triangle. ACB, then I can say the ratio of 36 over the length of DB. DB is the side of the triangle DEB. They are corresponding, means with the same same angle they are corresponds to. That's going to be 12. Now substitute their values. We know that the length of DE AC we need to find. So length of DE it's going to be 4 is equal to 36 by 12. Just do cross multiplication. AC is written as 36 times 4 by 12. So 12 times 1, 12 times 2, 12, uh, 12 times 2 is going to be 24, 12 times 3 is going to be 36. So what we are getting? So this, the length of AC, it's going to be 3 times 4. That's result, it's going to be 12. So if you are getting confused how I'm solving it, please use a calculator because calculator is allowed. And the length of AC, it's going to be 12. And that corresponds to option A. All right. Okay. Let's move to the next question. All right. So suppose that negative root seven by three comma y is a point in a quadrant two lying on the unit circle. Find y. Okay. Let me tell you what unit circle means. Unit circle. It's basically a circle which has been drawn in a x y plane whose radius is one. So let me represent according to the condition what they are mentioning over here. If I say, example, if I say this is the x-axis, y-axis and x-axis like this, x-axis, negative x, y-axis and negative y, right? So this is the first, we consider is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant and fourth quadrant. Clearly they have mentioned that this is in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, it means now this is the value of x and this is the value of y. If I'm taking the certain point over here, this is the point what I'm talking about. And if I draw a circle, this is basically the unit circle with the uh, uh, radius as one, isn't it? I'm just drawing for your purpose. So now look at here, whatever the coordinate points they have given here. So coordinate points are this. So what are those points are mentioning here? Those points are... Uh, negative root 7 by 3 comma y. So what does it the negative root 7 by 3 comma y is represent? Negative root 7 by 3 comma y. x value is negative root 7 by 3 and y value, y value is y itself, isn't it? So what I'm saying again is, so this is, if I'm talking, if I draw a line from here to here and line from here to here, what happens? It's make a right angled triangle. And this is the radius of the circle. And we know that the unit circle has the radius as one. And I know the length of the x-axis. Length of x-axis is going to be root 7 by 3. So this length is going to be uh, root 7 by 3. I won't be writing it as negative root 7 by 3. The reason is in the second quadrant, anyway, the value of x is going to be negative. So while representing the length of the line, we never represent it as negative. This is the point what we are talking about. Now, how do I solve for y? Use the Pythagorean rule. We know that according to the Pythagorean, in a right angle triangle, the square of the longest side is equals to sum of the square of the two other sides. So this is the length of the x 
I suppose to find the length of y, which is given in terms of y itself. If I say this is y and this is the hypotenuse, side opposite to 90 degrees hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse value here is going to be 1. So according to the Pythagorean, I can say 1 square is equals to x square plus y square. I can write root 7 by 3 square plus y square according to the rule of Pythagorean. 1 square value is 1 itself. 1 is equals to a root 7 square and a root 7 square. It gives you the value here as 7 and a 3 square is going to be 9 plus y square. So you might be getting what how I am doing. This is based on the exponential identity. If we have a something term a by b to the power m, this power will be distributed individually. This can be written as a to the power m over b to the power m. Same thing I am doing here root 7 square over 3 square. So 7 square root and uh, this square get cancelled out. I get the value of that as 7 and 3 square is going to be 9. As I need to solve for y, what I do, I have to arrange the numbers now, like terms. So y, keep y square here itself and take this term, term to the other side number. Then it becomes 1 minus 7 by 9 is equals to y square. So to simplify this fractional term, so because denominator here is 1, I have to make a common denominator. To make common denominator times here by 9, times here by 9. So it's going to be 9 minus 7 by the common denominator here and here is 9 is equals to y square. So 9 minus 7, what we are getting 2 by 9 is equals to y square. But actually we need a value of y. To get a value of y, I have to put a square root on both the sides. So square root and square will get cancelled. I'll be getting the value of y as this. And this can be written as root 2 over root 9. So root 2 is as it is and root square root of 9 I can read it as 3 is equals to y. And this is the value of y which they are asking us to find and which is representing uh, option A, square root of 2 by 3, right? So A is the right answer. So that's it for the today's class. In the next video, I'll be solving question number 11 to 15 from the same sample paper. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel so that you will be updated with the new videos. Thank you so much.